welcome back to the Chamber of Spoilers. I'm Rachel. And I'm Sam, fully vaccinated. <laughs> yes, thank God. And today we're going to discuss Trisha Paytas again? Again. Uh, what happened this time? Well, the camera is non-binary and now everyone is treating them like the second coming of Jeffree Star. Especially since lately they've been calling out a bunch of problematic creators like David Dobrik or James Charles. And you know what? That's a good thing. It's good that people who have a huge platform call out problematic people. So I guess we're going to discuss whether Trisha Paytas deserves the redemption arc people seem to be granting them. But I don't understand why everybody on this uh, app needs a redemption arc. I don't get it. I don't get why everybody needs some f magical story where they magically become a better person and they get better and they've learned and they've grown and they change we don't need that we don't need this person on this app anymore i'm so sick of it all of these people time and time again it's like well they've grown and changed who gives a you eat cheeseburgers yes. of course how do you <laughs> but you're jewish but you don't identify as jewish or you do I yes identify as jewish you can be jewish but you don't have to be orthodox do you guys fast during no. the fasting holidays no <laughs> Oh, that's like not Jewish then. You guys are like not even Okay, Jewish. we're going. No, we're, 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 we're like we're Calling out problematic behavior doesn't excuse Trisha's past actions or their current anti-Semitism. I don't care that they're non-binary. I do care that they continue to have adoring fans and make a huge profit despite being a blatant anti-Semite. Coming out as non-binary isn't a redemption arc. You can be non-binary and a shitty person. So we can't forgive Trisha because they haven't proved that they've changed their beliefs. And in Judaism, we have this concept called teshuva. Teshuva is our form of repentance and it has two categories, sins against God and sins against other people. We're gonna focus on the latter for now. Judaism recognizes that humans will always be flawed and will sin sometimes. Which is great. And the purpose of teshuva is to reduce your future sin by repentance and growing ethically and morally as a person to become more understanding, thoughtful, and kind. And there is a long process one has to go through to do teshuva. The main components are these. Understanding the harm you've done, being mindful of the consequences of that harm, striving to not do that harm again, and trying to undo it as much as possible. There are a lot more details, but that's the gist of it. It's like the good place. <laughs> Spoilers. Trisha hasn't moved through any of the steps that they would need to complete in order to earn the forgiveness of people they've harmed. They've never apologized for the things they've done, nor have they changed their behavior. There's also a difference between actions that hurt others and speech that hurts others. There's actually a Jewish fable about this. A woman came to the rabbi of her village and said, Rabbi, the butcher's wife has been gossiping about my family. She's told everyone lies about me. So the rabbi went to the butcher's wife and the woman expressed regret. She said, how can I fix this? How can I make this right? And the rabbi said, you must take a pillow to the top of the hill tonight when it's windy and cut it open. So the woman did as the rabbi said. The next day she went to the rabbi and he told her, good, now go get all the feathers back. The woman said, but I can't because the feathers had been scattered into the wind. And the rabbi said, no, you can't. Just as the feathers are lost to the wind, so are careless words. The point being, once you say something, you can't take it back. And once you say something to your large platform, it's spread even farther. We're allowed to be angry and upset with Trisha because they aren't interested in earning our forgiveness or making amends to the community. They have proven that because people keep telling them that they're being offensive and Trisha keeps making excuses and claiming they know better. And another part of Teshuva is the idea that no one no one at all is entitled to forgiveness, even if they make amends. So even if we're trying to be the bigger people, and we're not, we would be under no obligation to extend our forgiveness to Trisha. Neither is anyone they offended. Recently, Trisha has come out as non-binary. Good for them. Moving forward, we will be addressing Trisha by they, them pronouns. It's not really relevant to what we're gonna say about, well, everything else about them. <laughs> but we need to get the point out that coming out doesn't fix their attitude towards Judaism. Like, at all. We'll only add that somebody's gender isn't a good reason to stand them. Yes. yes. When is anti-Semitism acceptable? Never. Never ever. I would not like it here or there. I would not like it anywhere. I do not like it in a house. I do not like it with a mouse. I do not like it in the dark. Not in a tree. Not in a car. Trisha, let, let us, us be. be. Anti-Semitism is never acceptable. 
Actually, it isn't. We haven't brought up anything Trisha has said prior to two years ago. And they've never apologized for any of this stuff. So nothing's changed. Just Jason is it. half a Jew. I don't know if that matters. Probably not. I mean, he got bullied for being a Jew. So whatever well. is... Dude, you got to stop the Jewish gatekeeping. First of all, he tricked me. I thought he was a full Jew. And then he's like, I actually well, think my mom's only Jewish. I'm like, ah. Is 2020 really the past? Sure, it feels like 100 years ago, but it's really fairly recent in reality. So no, I don't forgive them for the past, especially when the past was like six freaking months ago. Trisha is a goddamn adult and should be held accountable for their actions. I mean, we literally celebrate holidays, like about how we defeated enemies who've been dead for like thousands of years. Why do we think anyone, why does anyone think we're gonna forgive Trisha for something they haven't even done to shoot up for? Something they're not even sorry for that happened like last year. Last year, like in the span of geologic time. <laughs> We're petty bitches. We are petty bitches. Not just us, as a people. I mean, Purim. Yeah, the fact that Purim just exists. We decided we needed a me holiday. Yeah, we needed a holiday that's just, you know, for us, just girls. <laughs> <laughs> self-care, Purim is self-care. We've gotten a lot of comments on our videos trying to excuse Trisha's behavior. For example, people have said that Trisha is marrying a Jew or is Jewish themselves, and that excuses them. And we've been over this, but it bears repeating, marrying a Jew isn't an excuse. And also Trisha isn't Jewish. One cannot be Jewish by association or like Trisha says, by insemination. <laughs> Trisha was born Christian and hasn't converted. Just cause they say they're Jewish doesn't actually make them Jewish. And no, this isn't gatekeeping. That, that's just how Judaism works. Converting is a process. There are traditions that need to be followed and tradition is very important to us. Tradition, tradition. tradition. It doesn't matter how old they are or that other religions like Christianity do conversions differently. What matters is that this process is important to us. Please understand and respect that. Honestly, with Trisha, I can expect literally anything. That's why I found it hilarious. I mean, honestly, it's not that deep. It's comedy. Some people get it and like it and others don't. Just my opinion. It's not a joke to us. Here's the thing, Jewish jokes can be funny, like really funny, but Jewish jokes are based on humorous references to Jewish culture and experiences. Trisha is not Jewish and their Jewish jokes are based on stereotypes, misinformation, and false assumptions. Jewish jokes are funny because they reflect actual, authentic, lived Jewish experiences. Can converts to Judaism tell jokes? Of course, because they're Jews and they live Jewish lives. But as we've already established, Trisha is not converting despite their claims. Now a good Jewish joke will go something like this. Hey Sam, do you know how you spot a Jewish convert? No, Rachel, how? It's easy, They're the only normal one in the synagogue. <laughs> Who are you to decide this is bigoted? To be honest, Trisha's absolutely be ignorant on a lot of topics and her Judaism love might only be fetish, fetish, bleh, <laughs> fetishization. However, I take issue with this video as well because you might be able to speak for most of the Jewish community. It's not okay for you to speak down about individual faiths and beliefs such as Jews for Jesus. Yeah, that was a mouthful. Yeah. I don't think she's anti-Semitic. She may be ignorant, but she means well. Also using her coming out and mental health videos is arrogant and rude. You never know what's going on in another person's life, even Trisha's. And as for believing in Jesus and being a Jew, I mean, isn't faith something deeply personal? Why should there be restrictions? She literally says she loves Judaism and it helps her find peace. That's good, no? Quite sad that these days we choose to tear people down for appearing woke. Words, Words have, have meaning. meaning. Faith may be personal, but you can't retcon religion. It's not the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Judaism and Jesus are incompatible. How many times do we have to repeat this? It's not gatekeeping to say that believing in Jesus is incompatible with Judaism. Christians don't get to decide what Judaism is. That's kind of our thing. We don't go around trying to tell you about your Jesus. Keep your hands off our stuff. And give us back our menorah. We know you have it, Pope Francis. OMG, get a life. Go after people that actually meaning to cause harm to Jewish people. People get offended so easily. OMG. Yeah, we're offended because what Trisha is saying is offensive and spreading lies and misinformation about Jews is hurting people. 
it may seem harmless, but even these ideas can cause a lot of harm. It can be hard for a lot of people, including us Jews, to distinguish between what's a harmless joke and actual white supremacist beliefs because, well, they're basically saying the same thing. So it's better just to assume that there's a harmful intent. A well-meaning person might make a joke about Jews running the world and being lizard people because they know that's not true, but then white supremacists say the same thing, mean it, and then use that belief to harm Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So how am I supposed to tell the difference when a non-Jewish person posts that? Mm -hmm. Making these jokes makes that kind of attitude more acceptable and makes it easier for the propaganda to spread. And like most misinformation about Judaism, it paints a religion in a bad light. The same as the blood liable or the lie that we killed Jesus. So for the last time, we did not kill Jesus. Not just us two, but like <laughs> Judaism as a whole. Our no people. Jews were involved in the murder of Jesus. But that idea that we killed Jesus makes a lot of people want to hurt us because they think we're all bad people. Lots of what Trisha says about Jews, like the fact that we're cheap and that American Jews aren't real Jews perpetuate similar ideas. So yeah, we're offended because these little issues snowball into bigger ones. We point out these small instances because that's where anti-Semitism starts. These seemingly harmless jokes and we need to attack anti-Semitism at its source. Cause by the time people are saying things like this, it's too late. If what you're saying is identical to what a white supremacist would say about Judaism, you may need to re-examine your sense of humor. Yeah, I mean, if people are saying like, hey, that joke's offensive, and it's the people you who are joking about, maybe we might just do, let's think about it. Let's think about it for like a minute. <laughs> We're not asking too much. Yeah, just like, little bit of self-examination. And there's also this issue of undercover Christians infiltrating Jewish communities. This is probably a whole video. Last month, a rabbi in Israel was outed as a Christian missionary. He had been part of an ultra-Orthodox community and, and this missionary had performed wedding ceremonies, worked as a scribe and a mohel, doing circumcisions. Everything he did as a rabbi doesn't count. Torah scrolls he wrote can't be used. The boys will need to undergo a ceremony to get ritually circumcised. And the weddings he performed are null and void. It's gonna fuck a lot of things up for a while. He got caught because one of his kids tried to proselytize at school and there'd been some suspicions about his behavior, but by the time he was found out, he'd been faking his identity for years. And yet nobody outside the Jewish community is really talking about that. And this isn't even the first time something like this has happened. It's just the most recent. Why aren't mainstream media talking about it? I don't know how you fake that stuff. Just for, seems... for, for years. What's the goal? <laughs> like obviously to convert converting people, but like it just seems like- It seems like an awfully Long. It's a long con. Did he manage to convert anybody? I don't think he did. I, he did it because Jews are notoriously hard to convert to Christianity. When you repeat the ignorant shit that Trisha is saying, it makes it easier for these missionaries to get access to Jewish communities and Jewish safe spaces, and for the express purposes of converting others. How does this relate to what we're talking about? Well, harm comes in all forms. It's not just calling Jews the K-word or Nazism flat out. Semitism is deeply entrenched in a lot of the world, and that's something you simply can't understand unless you've lived as a Jewish person. I don't think it's fair to decide for all Jews that we're offended. I'm an Orthodox Jew and I thought this was hilarious. I'm so sorry, but as a Jew that was born in Israel, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I'm Jewish and I know anyone on the internet can lie about it, but I really am. Anyways, I disagree. I feel like you don't have any valid argument so yeah that last one's really weird <laughs> i feel like that's like a kid i'm pretty sure that whoever wrote that last one isn't actually jewish it just seems like really defensive to me like i know anyone can lie about it but i am but i am anyway <sighs> well to those commenters good for you but you forgot one of the most important tenets of judaism two jews three opinions <laughs> your opinion is Batlid. But people are being hurt by these ideas that Trisha is perpetuating. And a lot of the stuff Trisha says is objectively anti-Semitic, whether you like it or not. Jewish people kill Jesus is a fact, is what I'm saying. But, That's debatable. But, it, no, it's a fact. But That's if... definitely hotly debated. <laughs> and I think that only people like Mel Gibson actually believe that. 
first of all, wait, no, it's not beta. <laughs> Jesus was a Jew. It's not like a bad thing. I'm not saying that. It's like the go, Jews killed Jesus. That's not. That's, that's like that's, propaganda. That's all that existed. The Roman at the time. killed. Uh, the Roman government killed Jesus. I okay. Well, I like. I, anyway, you like to think the Jews. Did. <laughs> I understand. In all honesty, as a Jew who lives in Europe, by the way, it is clear that you're going through some kind of issues of identity, girl. People showing interest in our culture is the least offensive thing. You should be happy and not jealous. Even though Trisha is not the smartest person, it is clear that her interest is genuine and at least can be perceived as humorous. I feel like you navigate through life using our religion as some sort of card. Judaism is not a personality trait, nor is it a special club. <laughs> this type of annoying attitude is what made us being prosecuted for centuries here. Get it together, or honestly, we don't need people like you. You clearly lack faith. God has the power to touch any soul on this planet, and at the end of the day, we are all his children. This video could have been at least educational for the ones who are showing interest in the culture. Clearly, Ethan and his family know this and are doing their best to guide Trisha. Yes, some things you said in this video I can 100% agree with, but mostly I only felt animosity and rejection. The answer to ignorance is not to call people anti-Semitic. Clearly, Americans don't understand the gravity that actual anti-Semitism is and just throw the term in order to get internet points. Very sad and unfaithful in my opinion. Remember, the people who helped us in the past, not that long ago, were from all different walks of life. Let's educate and not alienate. God is transcendent. That is the one of the most Christian things I've ever heard. That is the most Christian thing I've ever heard. <laughs> None of what they say about God or... That is like the most Christian rhetoric I've ever heard. Not, maybe they are Jewish and like they're raised in Christianity or maybe they are Jewish and like they don't have like, a, like an understanding of why this is the stupidest thing I've ever read. <laughs> uh, but... Again, that's, that's a, a lot. That's, that's a, a lot, lot. Right there. I think we're supposed to be grateful to the people who thanks helped being, us. Thanks for being a borderline decent person. Who helped us during the Holocaust. Yeah, like, oh, thank you for saving my life. Uh, despite the fact that you apparently don't have any political power to leverage. You, you can vote, right? Maybe you should have voted to not have Hitler in power. Hmm. Yeah. Like, there is a lot of anti-Semitism in Europe. N no one's going to deny that. No mm -hmm. one can deny that. But there's, there's anti-Semitism in the States, yeah, too. Trust me. <laughs> Like, why the heck is it so hard to get the high holidays off? Those are pain in the ass. I mean, I was only able to get it off at my last job because it was a Jewish newspaper at Chamber of Spoilers. I didn't take anything personally. I'm just tired that many of us are so intolerant. Also, you know as well as I that the core reason we've been executed and persecuted since the beginning time is lack of understanding. We as our people and our religion. Don't you think if we educate other people can be accepting? That was my point. Anyway, I don't think dedicating a video about bashing someone who clearly has numerous mental issues and obviously doesn't come across in the best light but still tries hard to learn about us was the best move. So this comment is offensive on multiple levels. Obviously, people showing interest in Judaism and Jewish culture is great. I know many people who study Judaism academically or take part in Jewish traditions who aren't Jewish. The difference is that there's a respectful and accepted way to do that. For example, having a Passover Seder as a Christian in your own home is appropriation. Full stop. Being invited into a Jewish home to take part in a friend's Seder, however, is perfectly fine. Also, like, the idea that Judaism isn't a personality trait or some exclusive club, laughable. <laughs> you know that we literally call ourselves the chosen people, and right? And that means chosen to have responsibilities, not like we're the only ones chosen to go to heaven. <laughs> yeah, like, like chosen to suffer. <laughs> we all agreed on one thing one time didn't read the fine print and now we're stuck with this yep chosen for dairy allergies and yet we just had a whole holiday dedicated to the eating of dairy yep that cheesecake just can't resist it's the forbidden fruit <laughs> who the hell decided on that i don't know but it wasn't someone smart there's a high bar to convert to judaism <laughs> and a lot of us feel very connected to our heritage the idea that being protective or feeling protective of our traditions is what led to us being persecuted is both ludicrous and disgusting. The core reason Jews are persecuted is ignorance and hate, not lack of understanding. A lack of understanding is me and my state withholding tax, not murdering Jewish people. It's also very much not my job to educate anyone, let alone someone who doesn't want to listen. But here I am anyway, shouting into a void. Also, the idea that Americans don't know what anti-Semitism is, is ignorant and dismissive. I have yet to share my personal experiences with anti-Semitism, but let me just say it isn't exclusive to Europe. Lastly, being mentally ill doesn't excuse you from being criticized. If you're mentally stable enough to make millions of dollars online, you're stable enough to be held accountable for what you do and say. I don't think we're being mean. And sure, we probably do sound a little condescending. Mm. Mm. But it's because Trisha can't grasp simple ideas about Judaism, but acts like an expert. 
if they were genuinely curious and didn't act like an insufferable know-it-all, then we wouldn't be an issue. And Trisha has so many resources at their disposal that they don't have an excuse to be so ignorant. They could talk with a rabbi or use Google. And that would explain why Jews don't believe in Jesus, why Jews for Jesus is a harmful cult that preys on unsuspecting Jewish people and basically everything else they say about Judaism. Trisha is willfully ignorant. They're choosing not to recognize the gaps in their knowledge or even recognize the possibility that they could be wrong. And it was wrong of them to call some Jews not legit. And they still haven't apologized for that. And in fact, they doubled down on that idea. If they were willing to learn, they would have apologized. And then we wouldn't have to be doing Judaism 101 on YouTube. Because you all realize we're not getting paid for this yet. Yeah, like like people, somebody, somebody commented like, I hope they claim this video. And I'm like, yeah, they can have all the nothing that we've made off of it. <laughs> yeah, we're not monetized yet. Yeah, it's like, we're literally doing this so that we don't go insane. And you know what? It's absolutely fine not to know something. There's a shit ton of stuff I don't know. Mm -hmm. And everyone has different knowledge levels. But when Trisha acts like an expert about Judaism, when they have a sub-zero knowledge level, <laughs> that's not good. What's funny to me is that, like, the idea, just, like, the, the sheer chutzpah that you could take thousands of years of tradition and boil it down to, well, I understand it now because I, I fuck Jewish guys. I get it. I, don't, I didn't study. I didn't do research. I didn't read. I didn't spend time with, like, a group I didn't go to a rabbi and I understand it because my fiance is Jewish I, I'm I'm Jewish by association I have all of this knowledge I'm, I'm really informed like how fucking ludicrous to believe that about yourself to think that like because like we're not even we're not experts on Judaism like we don't have like degrees I went to a Jewish day school for a while I went to Hebrew school for a bit but my he my, my Hebrew is trash <laughs> oh god same hey I really like your video, but I just want to say that I think you sometimes sound a little condescending. They're just people talking about their lives and playing a game for fun. I don't think they have to be such experts on the topic. Obviously, Trisha doesn't know a lot about Jewish culture, but you don't have to be rude about her not knowing things. She's just a woman with a passion. <laughs> and like you said, not everyone has the same knowledge, and I do think she's trying. I agree that calling her some Jews not legit is so rude. Calling her so fucking stupid and saying what's fucking wrong with you was mean, I think. Especially after you started by saying that everyone has different knowledge levels and it's not their fault they have different knowledge levels. Then every time you try to explain something, you sound so condescending. Sorry if this isn't coherent because English isn't my first language. Then we have, yikes, you're rude. <laughs> when somebody ignorant talks like an expert, and acts like they're the authority, we're obligated to speak out against it if we have the knowledge. Sure, we could be polite and courteous. More polite and courteous. Sure, sure, but uh, I have absolutely no obligation to be nice to bigots. Nor do I. Yeah, like honestly, you don't get participation points. <laughs> like, oh, you try, check mark my face. <laughs> Uh, when you like say things that are offensive and ignorant like it's just not it's not my yeah. and also like as jews as marginalized people it's not our job i'm not we getting... would know if they were really trying and it's just so obvious that they're not and they're not interested in trying harder yeah they're just trying to make a cheap quick buck you do not deserve grace just because you're right about some things doesn't make you a good person you would think this would be self-explanatory but as we keep saying here we are mm -hmm. Trisha has done some good with their platform, surprisingly. So at least it's not a total waste. Kind of been on a roll lately, to be honest. Sure, we can call it that. <laughs> but just because you're right about something or you're on the right side of an issue, that doesn't make you right about everything, nor does it excuse your terrible behavior. Prominent YouTubers coming out to condemn other YouTubers' misdeeds is good. And I don't think Trisha doing that is hypocritical. But deifying them and talking about how great they are for such a controversial take as rape is bad is frustrating. Yay! You called out a bad person! What do you want? 
a cookie or uh, not as big of a jerk as you could have been award. It's like the streamies have an award for, um, you tried. <laughs> as a Jewish person, it's really hard to hear crap like, Trisha is so amazing for calling out James Charles and David Dobrik. We stand their realness. Mm -hmm. When that same realness includes all the jokes that we've talked about targeting Jewish people. Just calling Trisha problematic or saying they're growing is also pretty disingenuous because Trisha has never expressed contrition for the way they've offended and hurt Jewish people. And many prominent YouTubers have criticized Trisha, but never for the way they talk about Jews. Except for D'Angelo Wallace, the one good YouTuber. <laughs> we thank you, D'Angelo, for your service. Trisha Paytas crosses the line so far. Trisha Paytas pole vaults over the line at least once per episode. Trisha goes on and on about how she loves Jewish people, which is super weird because, again, you know she's dating Ethan's sister's brother, who is Jewish. I physically cringe and I want to turn it off. We had to put together a long list of horrible things that Trisha has said for our first video about that. You remember that video. The list was exhaustive in that it exhausted me. I took to my bed, Sam. I took to my bed like a Victorian fainting. Thing. But if you're still a little skeptical about all that anti-Semitism stuff, we've made you a little cheat sheet. You can view it here. This is a comprehensive spreadsheet of Trisha's anti-Semitism. We have also made a playlist of all of our videos about Trisha, including our first compilation and another additional video compilation. Hello darkness, my old friend. Trisha is a textbook cultural appropriator. They take aspects of a culture that interests them and then uses that for profit. And not only are they appropriating, they're saying offensive things that I would not accept anyone saying about Judaism. Trisha thrives off of controversy and they're a self-proclaimed proud troll. But Judaism is not a costume for shock value. Mm. And despite their recent coming out as non-binary, being part of a marginalized community doesn't make you a good person. Also, being part of a marginalized community doesn't mean, mean you make good art. We've already talked about how terrible their song, I Love You Moses is. And for this video, we decided to do a little research and we watched the original that it was based of called I Love You Jesus. And somehow that is worse. I kind of have to give Fisher credit. I Love You Moses is objectively the better song. Like, it's catchy, it's rhymes in places. I Love You Jesus is incoherent by comparison. I love you Jesus. You can act bad or you can be good. You can be from privilege or stray from the hood. Making bad art doesn't necessarily make you a bad person either, but I still found I Love You Moses to be offensive on multiple levels. And we really, really don't want to keep doing videos at Trisha. They don't pay the bills. Yet. <laughs> we want to move on. But nobody except us and D'Angelo Wallace, who we stan, seem willing to call them out. So here we are again. And what now? Do we think Trish is finally going to see these videos and change their ways? No. <laughs> but maybe fans of Trisha, if you're watching this, you can start to recognize how harmful Trisha's being and start calling them out. Yeah, as we've previously said, Trisha is able to say bigoted and anti-Semitic things because they have a supportive fan base. People really love Trisha and excuse things that they do. So if you're a fan of theirs, please note that by supporting them, you're basically endorsing their anti-Semitism. And even if you aren't anti-Semite, you are telling Jews that you don't care about it, that it doesn't matter to you. And that says a lot to us. And on that light note, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. <laughs> Do you have anything to drink? Oh yeah. L'chaim. L'chaim. thinking about the one that comes later. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It's okay. We'll put that in somewhere random. <laughs>